Okay, I want to show you how we do a sample purity calculation if we have any UV data. There's a few ways we can do this, um, and I'd like to start with a manual calculation so you understand the principles of how the program is doing this, and then we can go over to a automated one in automated fashion. So it's a mass-directed purity analysis. It's utilizing the information of a given formula or a given mass, which is input by the user, which is then relayed to the UV chromatogram. And let's see how that works. So I'm in Navigator view in my Qualitative Analysis 10 program, and I'm opening the data file without loading any results or running any methods. And in this case, we can see a total ion chromatogram of uh, and we can see it's been run in negative mode. So in this case, I'm going to extract some of my UV data. Uh, in this case, I'm going to add uh, other chromatograms for my DAD, diode array detector. I'm going to add the 260 um, wavelength that it was acquired with a reference wavelength at 355. If I now extract and you'll see the peaks get integrated when extracted. We can see our DAD trace, and we can see it sort of correlates with the TIC once we integrate the peaks. But there is a slight delay time between these. You'll see these don't quite line up at the moment, and that's because the configuration of the DAD is normally upstream from the mass spec in this case, and there's some delay in the fluidics path and sometimes you need to adjust for that and we'll do that uh, momentarily. So in this example it was a, a RNA oligonucleotide analysis and we might want to establish the peak purity of this peak relative to the other ones. So we're going to extract our peak of interest by using the extract ion chromatogram tool. So right click extract chromatograms, select a extracted ion chromatogram, and then plug in a value here. In this case, our um, oligonucleotides forming, forming a negative four charge state, and it's, it's quite a big molecule. We're going to extract it with a fairly wide window just to see where the peak is eluting. So in this case, we can see there's our UV chromatogram, there's our extracted ion chromatogram of our molecule of interest. Again, you can use your range select tool and you can highlight and if you double click, you break out some spectra for that range you've highlighted. If we zoom in, right click and dragging on that peak of interest, we can see here is the isotope cluster and I extracted some information on the average mass of, of this ion. So at the, in this case you can see there's um, about a 0 0.04 second delay time between these two signals, signal traces, and we're now going to adjust for that so we can actually do a peak purity calculation. So we use the left menu in method automation. We There's an option under chromatogram saying adjust delay time where we can now shift on the uh, MS time. So we're going to plug in a value which I've pre-calculated. It can simply be the difference between these two peak retention times. So if we now click adjust delay time, the TIC as well as the extracted ion chromatogram traces have moved on and you can now see what peak you need to integrate and to have some relative information on. So again, double clicking on these axes scales everything. So now that we know our target peak is at 13.9 minutes, now we can do our peak purity calculation. And that's already been done. If you show the integration peak list and we click on that window, then we can see all the peaks that have been integrated in the UV chromatogram. And we might just need to add an additional column. So if you right click, you say add columns, and you add area sum, you can see some of these calculations have already been done. So in this case, the 13.9 peak is 48% of the total number of peaks, in peak area at least, in the area, 
48% um, of the sum. So we might want to change some of these integration parameters and have certain thresholds. These can be set in the integrate UV tab in the method editor and we can set certain suitabilities if you need to do calculations according to a pharmacopoeia or if you have peak area height cutoffs. So in this case um, at a relative area greater than 5% of the largest peak we can reintegrate that chromatogram and you can see how these values change depending on how what your thresholds are and how low you need to calculate. So again looking at some of these results we need to the area sum in this case for that peak is 51%. So that's the manual way of extracting and creating peak chromatograms. This graphic can then be exported uh, alongside this, this table. A simple right-click export would generate a CSV file and this image can just be copied to clipboard or pasted to, to have some results. So now we'll look into how to do this in an automated fashion. That's um, maybe faster and especially if you want to do uh, multiple calculations on multiple wavelengths then this can be done fairly quickly through a workflow. So to manage this in an easier fashion I'm going to go to compounds view and I'm going to close my data file so we can just start with a clean slate and opening the file again without loading any of the results we can now see a total wavelength chromatogram as well, but there's a total ion chromatogram, total wavelength chromatogram from the UV that's being extracted. So in this case, I want to run, I'm in my workflow editor, I want to run a sample purity using a formula. And I'm going to put my formula in here. In this case, that was for my RNA oligonucleotide and then any parameters for this workflow are located in the method editor tab sub tabs from there and the type of purity I would like is just to do a UVA you can add multiple UV channels for the calculations if required the Calculation is going to be on the UVA trace, but it can also be the average of all the selected algorithms and all the selected traces. The delay time you would specify. In this case, we've already specified it in the manual extraction, but you similarly, you'd specify the de delay time. This is a fixed value, so for your configuration you might only need to determine it once to realize what is the delay time between the UV detector, the DAD, and your mass spec. So it, for automated workflows, this value will then remain fixed throughout. Or if you change the fluidics path, then do realize that this value needs to be updated. In this case, we're not going to exclude any masses in the calculations. We are going to integrate the MS with a certain algorithm, with the Agile 2. We are, have certain suitability calculations, again, peak filters, relative area cutoffs, we can integrate the MS trace with. Then for the UV trace, we can integrate separately. You might see certain artifacts or you might want to start an integration calculation only after the void peak therefore uh, uh, you can specify these using some other integration parameters what's especially useful is the chem station integrator where you can start integration events you would potentially start an integration event keep it off or only start it at two minutes and I'm just using my keyboard to type in there and then you might want to stop integration at a certain time point so at 18 minutes as you know 
depending on your system and your chromatography, uh, you, you might know um, where your void peaks come out and where you have background peaks that you've evaluated injecting a, a, a blank solvent. So there are a number of drop downs here you can um, play around with as well. And there's also area area reject options if, if too many peaks are getting integrated. So for now, we'll stick to the Agile 2 algorithm. The suitability calculations you can do, uh, if need be, according to certain pharmacopoeia regulations. And those are some of the parameters we've set for the sample purity calculation. For the fund by formula calculations, we do need to specify for our target molecule we're plugging in. There can be multiple uh, formulas here, just comma separated. We are going to look for different ion species. In this case, we know our molecule is multiply charged. Extracted ion chromatogram integration can be done with um, different algorithms again. And again, there are certain peak height, peak area thresholds you can set for, for your calculations. And the charge states here, I do want to ensure that I've got one to four different charge states. So let's run through that workflow. And we're operating on the entire run. You can, again, restrict this to a certain retention time range if you know your you have void peaks or um, if, if you know your um, chromatogram setup and your system setup. So let's run through that workflow. And in this case, we, we get a table with a result where we might not, um, the result in this case, it says qualified or not qualified. So out of one target, zero was qualified. So it means it does not match our purity value calculation. Um, and in this case, I'm going to add all the columns in this compound list table and then remove any empty ones by just clicking on this icon, the fourth one from the left. And we can see our purity calculation was 51.9, similarly to the value we got for doing this calculation manually. And we've specified in our calculations that the minimum acceptable purity is 75%, therefore it does not meet our criteria of the, the, the um, sample purity. And this can be specified. In this case, there are multiple diluting oligomers. So at this stage, we can then print a report. If we say file print workflow report, we can get a purity report out of this. Which again translates that value. And we can see there are zero qualified targets, but we get the purity value and we can get some information on the compound. In this case, we see multiple charge states, a negative four charge state species, the DAD traces, the total wavelength chromatogram, as well as the different signals are being pulled out. And this report is quite comprehensive at this stage. It can be tailored and a lot of these graphs can be removed by editing some of these templates. Here's our compound of interest. We can see it's eluted at 13.9 minutes and the target, um, the, the area, the percentage area here is not based on the area sum and an additional column can be added in this template report fairly easily to, to have that. But essentially it was at 51.9%. So that's how we do a sample purity analysis using the manual way as well as the workflow options way.